Hey, everybody, come on in. Come on in, have a seat. <clears throat> Get you a drink. <laughs> Get ready for this good old review. And please let me know if y'all can hear me because the other day I actually did a whole entire live on Facebook. <laughs> what was I doing? Uh, Which live was it? Oh, gosh, was it Greenleaf? No, it wasn't Greenleaf. OMG. No, it was Star. It was Star. And I had to binge watch, binge watch like three shows because I had totally forgot even to um, watch those shows so I could do a review. And I did a whole entire live. And people were watching me. Like, you guys, nobody said nothing. Like, they, they didn't type in the chat, Tanya, we can't hear you. <laughs> Ah, turn your volume up. Nothing. They didn't say nothing. But anyway, thank God. Finally, somebody had came in on the live and they was like, hey, we can't hear you. And then I realized that the volume was turned all the way. My mic was turned all the way down. But thank God I um, was recording also on my cell phone uh, on my Instagram. So I was able to save that video and then upload it on YouTube. <laughs> But I was like, are you kidding me? I had all kind of people watching the live and nobody said nothing. So please make sure if you can't ever hear me, <laughs> just type in the chat. Uh, Tanya, we can't hear you. Uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> but anyway, um, today we're going to be going over uh, the last episode of Real, House Real Housewives of Atlanta. And it's season 11, episode 3. And the title of the episode was called A New Edition. So make sure when you come in, you like the video, you subscribe to my channel if you are not already a subscriber. And also make sure you share. Please make sure you share uh, my videos on your uh, social media platforms, whether it's uh, Twitter or, you know, Facebook or, you know, whatever social media you use. But anywho, come on in, come on in, like, subscribe, share. Thank you very kindly. And also in the chat area is um, two links I always put in the chat uh, when we first get started. The first one is to our Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews Facebook page. So make sure you go over there, um, click that link to go over to Facebook. It'll take you right to our Facebook group and request to join that group and I will add you to the group. And also the second link is to my uh, custom cake decorating Facebook page, which is called Tanya's Delights Slice by Slice. Um, if you want to follow me on that page to support me or check out some of my cake art, please feel free. Click on that link. Go over there. Like that page on Facebook. Thank you again very kindly. But anywho, we're about to get started on this live. <clears throat> and then I actually got to... Uh, after this, a few of our other shows that I do reviews on is coming on tonight, but um, I'm going to try to make some quick store runs, run a few errands, because I have a ton of orders for um, Thanksgiving, a ton of orders from cakes to cupcakes, um, you know, for the holiday. So I have to go out and I tried to go um, earlier, but I had to work, had to get in some overtime at the other gig. So anywho... Um, Let's get through this review because I got some shopping to do. But anyway, I hope everybody's having a wonderful start to their week, a wonderful Monday. I hope everything is going well for everybody. Um, now, again, this episode of Housewives of Atlanta, it was called A New Edition. Um, the show started off with Eva and Portia. They are both at the gym working out with uh, Portia's personal trainer, whose name I think she said was D.P., um, don't ask me what that stand for, <laughs> but, um, anywho, uh, that man, he had some guns on him. Uh, he was kind of hot. <laughs> he was actually kind of hot, but anywho, anywho, uh, we were supposed to be discussing Portia and Eva, so I'm not going to focus too much on that personal trainer, but mm, that beard and everything, Lord have mercy. <laughs> but anyway, um, they were sitting around, you know, working out, having fun, you know, playing around a little bit, but, you know, working out nonetheless. And after they were done, they were sitting around, you know, relaxing and everything. And Portia was expressing to Eva 
um you know how in love she is with her boyfriend how everything is going so far you know she really does seem to be really happy with this new guy in her life named dennis but one thing she mentioned was how it's kind of hard um for her to express those feelings to you know everybody like her friends and family because you know her relationship still at this time <laughs> it has been very short so she hasn't been dating him for that long um and eva she basically tells her you know what she gives her a little advice and a little encouragement and she's like you know what you and dennis just do what y'all do just do y'all you know don't don't give a darn what the naysayers say because you know it's all about y'all and you know everybody is different she was like y'all might have been dating each other for a short period of time but you know Everybody is different in our circle. Like Nene, she mentioned how Nene been with Greg. You know, she's been with Greg for years, for like 20 plus years. Um, then she said, Marlo. She was like, we all got Nene on one hand who's been together with her man forever. Then we got Marlo, <laughs> who's 42 years old and has never been married. And I was like, is she throwing shade? But, you know, she really wasn't at first. But then Portia was like, oh, is that the only person you can think of that's uh, 42 years old and never been married? <laughs> but um, Eva was like, no, that's not what I meant. You know, and it didn't even come off that way, y'all. It didn't even come off that way. But after that, it seemed like Portia was kind of egging on the shade or was like, you know, trying to um push her to be shady because after that, she was like, um, you know what? Everybody is different. We got some people over here, you know, who are going to be with their man for a long time. You know, they've been together for a long time. And then we got, you know, old <laughs> Marlo over here. And then she started talking about how things were at the, uh, you know, when they went to Miami and Portia had secured their, um, I think they were they in a hotel. I think they were in a hotel. They was in a suite. And she didn't quite like how Marlo was acting all bougie, you know. Like she was supposed to get the best room out of everybody else. Remember how she had took Portia's luggages out of her room and put them in the little room that, uh, you know, Marlo was assigned. And then <laughs> she moved all her stuff in Portia's room, which was a really big, nice room. But again, it seemed like Portia was like pushing her or egging her on to, you know, be shady towards Marlo. Um, I say that because after that, after that, they start discussing Cynthia. And I'm like, okay, okay. Now I really think Portia is trying to be Miss Shady Boots. But anyway, she was asking her, you know, what's up with you and Cynthia? How are things going with you? You know, especially when we were down, you know, in Miami. And Eva started off with, you know, things were great. You know, me and Cynthia, we was really, really clicking. She was like, I love how we was clicking. We was getting along. And then Portia was like, well, that's all good and dandy, but I really do like some uh serious modeling competition. That led to <laughs> that led to Eva, you know, mentioning how people compare her uh to you know Cynthia in certain ways, and Eva was like uh basically giving her her props, you know, giving her her you know her her credit. For being a great model. You know, Cynthia is, I think she's 50. Is she 51? I think she's 51. So at first she was like giving her her credit and giving her her props. And then after that, when Portia said what she said about the competition, that's when she was like, oh yeah, you know what? She is older than me and everything. Basically trying to say she still got it and Cynthia don't have it anymore. But she was like, you know what? When they was teasing and joking around, talking about come through Cynthia, show us how y'all used to do it. Come through Cynthia. <laughs> show us that veteran catwalk. I was like the shade. Y'all know y'all wrong. Y'all know y'all wrong. Because Cynthia, she 51. But Cynthia looks hotter than a lot of people, than a lot of people. Then she was making shade about her booty. Talking about Cynthia, the only model that she know that got a butt. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so what? Everybody ain't straight flat up and down like, you know, most models are typically, you know, really skinny, no butt, barely any curves, barely any curves, unless, of course, you're a plus size model. But anywho, it was like Portia was egging her on to be shady. Then she called her mother. She was like, we got to respect mother. You know, I think they were uh, 
trying uh okay you know when it comes to the catwalk and a lot of the uh gay people you know way back when they used to have those houses and there was a mother at a house and all that and they used to do catwalks and all that anywho and modeling like underground <laughs> i think that was where she was getting that from like that tv show that i do uh reviews on called pose um i really like that show not a lot of people you know are into it but i really like the story because i like the storylines of all the characters but anywho that's what she was getting that from to my mother come through mother but we got to respect mother because <laughs> that's how they sound on pose but then after that portia was like kind of rethinking things like maybe we going a little too far because then she was like okay okay leave cynthia alone leave cynthia alone and i'm like hold up you're the one who started it <laughs> it's too late now wait till cynthia see this scene on the uh reunion if not before it is. <laughs> but anyway that was cracking me up but um as far as like greg goes um when they got to that scene with him and nini now we all know that uh greg had colon cancer um and he had surgery recently about a month ago they said to remove all the cancer you know from his colon area and when Nene and Greg have visited the Anderson, which is a hospital, and I guess it's actually a um, renowned cancer treatment hospital, you could tell that Greg was really, really trying his hardest to be really strong. You know, under these circumstances, he was trying not to crack. Like, some scenes, he was just like holding his head in his hands and just shaking his head and he just looked like he just wanted to crack but but nini's not gonna let him nini got his back all the way she's supporting him she's so super supportive and when they were telling him you know about the chemo and everything my heart like literally literally went out to both of them to greg and nini because of what he's going through and also because of her because she's like i'm used to greg you know being the strong one but now you know the tables are turned so she has to be there for him and be his support you know because that is a cancer cancer is a horrible horrible disease that can tear a lot of families apart so i'm glad she's there to support him but when he was walking down that hallway um singing um uh, i ain't never heard that song before but it was something like um never give up don't give in you were built to win I don't know if it had like a tone to it or a harmony or anything. He was just kind of like singing, talking the song. And he was like, never give up. I'll never give up. I'll never give in. God built me to win. And then he was just like, oh, I think that's when the tears started falling. He just was like, I never give up. I'll never give up. I'll never give up. And then like the scene just went black and it went to a commercial i was in tears y'all i was like oh poor greg <laughs> like everybody loves them some greg and he is like like i call him the coolest og i know <laughs> because he's cooler than a fan as they would say but anywho when he started singing that song down that hallway never give up never give in god built me to win i'm gonna keep that song in my mind when i'm going through stuff that's gonna be my little song but anywho you know i love again i love how nini is so supportive of his every decision like even when the uh doctor was saying you know we got all the cancer out the colon area but normally you know after this type of cancer or you know most cancers they suggest chemo because although they can't see any cancer sometimes it's so microscopic that they can't see it until it gets a little bigger or it starts to you know spread or whatnot so they were suggesting him you know what they probably suggest to all their patients or most of them you know we recommend that you get chemo but greg was like no no i don't want chemo i don't want chemo and the doctor you know even though the doctor was saying you know we suggest this because it can reduce um any risk of cancer returning by at least half but he was like nope nope i don't want to do chemo and nini was basically like you know what whatever he wants you know this is greg's body if, if he don't want chemo who am i to tell him to get chemo so um 
as I me- I mentioned this because I know a lot of people who've had cancer and people who die from cancer. And sometimes family members and friends, they try to tell you what you need to do with your cancer. Like they'll try to fight and argue with you and tell you, you know, get chemo or don't get chemo. Or, you know, then be confusing the cancer patient. They don't know which way to go. They be thinking, oh, well, this person told me this, so I'm going to do this. You know, sometimes you just got to let them make up their own decision, talk to the experts, pray about it. You know, just be there to support them because whatever decision that they make, you have to be there to support them, you know, no matter what. And God forbid the cancer come back just like he beat it this time, if it's God's will, you know what? He'll beat it again. So, anywho, we all need to continue to keep them in our prayers, especially Greg. But, you know, Nene too, because she's, you know, part of his support system. So, <clears throat> let's all continue to keep them in our prayers. And then we move over to uh, Candy and her good friend Shamari. Now, you know, that's why they titled this episode a new edition because Shamari. Uh, we know is a female member from the female group uh, Black from back in the 90s. Um, she's also married to Ronnie DeVoe from New Edition and from the group BBD, Belle Bill DeVoe. Um, I know I remember like Black is one of those groups that I liked back then, but didn't always stay on my mind like other groups, like maybe TLC, Escape, you know, uh, other group, other girl groups like that. Uh, but they were still pretty good. And I do remember that song called Boom Like an 808. <laughs> At that time, I didn't know Candy had, re- had wrote the remix for that song, but I did love that song. That song was the ish back then. But then, you know, Shamari, she is such a really beautiful woman. And from way back then, it still looks like, you know, she hasn't aged one bit. But then she still is quite young. I did not know that DeVoe was 13 years her senior. Like, I mean, I wasn't like, you know, looking all into their personal information. If I have a really, really favorite um, singer or artist or actor, you know, I might look them up on Wiki or whatever, you know, find out where they're born, how they're, you know, we all do it. But anywho, I did not know he was 13 years her senior. And that explains why she really still looks really young because I'm like, hmm, Ronnie got to be in his 40s. You know, from the time they came out, (laughs) from the time they came out, he should be, what, around like 45 or 46, 47, something like that, probably almost 50. Uh, Y'all can look it up if you want to and give me the exact uh, age if you want to. Just put it in the chat. But um, I think he's about 50. So that would probably make her still about, you know, 30 about 35-ish, you know, but anywho, she she still look good, and he does too, I used to have like the biggest crush on Ronnie DeVoe, I used to have like the biggest, biggest crush, but anyway, um, she was cracking me up when she said that ladies, you know, he has so many female fans that sometimes when they be out, they walk up to her and just be like, uh, excuse me, but do you know that's your husband, um, I'm actually married to your husband, <laughs> She be, they be like, that's been my husband since the 80s. <laughs> she like, nah, sis. No, honey. No, no, boo. That is my husband. We is married. That is my husband. <laughs> but anyway, she ha- she understands. He has a big female fan. Um, a lot of female fans, you know, from all over. But anyway, um, when they were uh sitting around talking, she invited Candy to come listen to her. And her husband, because not only is their group trying to get back together, Black, you know, their female group, uh, but her and her husband started a group. And I guess from what I saw, she was singing, he was rapping. Um, So she invited Candy, you know, to come meet them at the studio to listen to them. Um, So when y'all heard them, honestly, like honestly, honest opinions only, um, how did y'all feel? Was y'all feeling the music? Was y'all vibing to the music? Do you want to hear more? <laughs> I actually kind of thought it was okay. Like, okay, all right. You know, um, I thought his little rapping was, you know, okay. <laughs> and she still sounds good to not have been, you know, singing with her group for they've been 
they've been around forever. And as far as I know, haven't really performed a lot over the years. But anywho, um, when she has said that when they first met, they had sex on the first night. Um, at first I was like, when she said he's 13 years her senior, I was like, okay, I see you. <laughs> I see you, Ronnie, trying to be a sugar daddy and all, you know, back then and stuff. But when she said they had sex on the first night they met, I was like, oh, okay, all right. Well, obviously, obviously, since they still together 17 years later, sex was not the only thing that they were feeling, you know, at the time when they had sex. Because you know how it is. Normally, after a one night stand, <laughs> a relationship with longevity does not come afterwards. <laughs> You'll be lucky if you hear from that person again, if you even remember their name or got their phone number, license plate, anything. <laughs> but anywho, um, then they go over to Nene and Greg's house. Uh, Cynthia, you know, she dropped by. You know, Cynthia is always very supportive of everybody. So she dropped by, you know, to show her support and check on Nene and Greg, see how they doing. Um, and I thought that was so very thoughtful of also, uh, Tony Braxton being supportive. She done put Nene in touch with one of her holistic wellness persons. And I don't know any holistic people, but I do know that a lot of people, when they're going through cancer, um, sometimes they seek or reach out to holistic wellness people because sometimes things other than medicine do work. For certain people, um, they actually, you know, got her some healing trees. She was like, if this stuff helps Greg um, get well and help him from getting sick and heal him from all them cancer cells, I'll buy a whole force of these trees. <laughs> so I think she had actually bought like, I don't know, it looked like she had like three or four. But anyway, I feel her. I feel the whole house up with trees. <laughs> but anyway, um, Greg was also explaining to Nene I mean, not to Nene, but to Cynthia, you know, being he has been going through this cancer and fighting it and battling it. And so far, it looks like he's kicking cancer in the ass. He's cancer free right now. He's not doing the chemo. Going to have faith. That is not coming back, but he also wants to help other men and be supportive to others. So he's going to do that. He's going to reach out to men and he's going to go talk to them about, you know, cancer and, you know, just kind of be a support system. And I love how um, they are so very open with this as well. You know, on this reality show, it's it's. It's, it's very touching. It's, it's kind of very private moments that they're actually having on air, too. Um, one thing about it, it's definitely going to reach those who are trying to be strong, either for themselves or either for somebody else, like a family member or a really good friend. So I do love that. And besides that, you know, being so open on the reality show is also kind of like guaranteeing them they bags. <laughs> Because it's definitely going to keep your job, keep you, keep you with job security. No shade to who you know who. <laughs> we all know who I'm referring to. Anyway, Kenya Ma. <laughs> but you know what? Check this out. Um, Candy, she actually called up Eva and Portia to invite them to Black's performance. Now... I wasn't surprised when she called Eva, of course, but when she called Portia, I was thinking, dang, they really must be cool right now because you know they was beefing some horrible last season. And when Portia had invited Candy down to Miami at the beginning of this season, you know, I don't think Portia, I don't think Candy would have came if she wouldn't have known that it was for the sake of Nene, you know, to support her while she does her little comedy show and everything. But anywho, um, Shamari is actually one of Portia's friends, you know, good friends from high school. So she might have already been invited or might have already been planning to come. But I still think that was cool how, you know, Candy sent her out a personal invite or called her up, you know, invited her personally. But on the night of Black's performance, they was at the AT, they was at ATL at the, I think it was called the ATL live event. And everybody was looking fabulous. I was like, oh, look at my hubby Ronnie looking all good in that blue, <laughs> that green jersey. 
<laughs> Don't tell Shamari I said that was my husband. <laughs> but seriously, though, um, hanging out with the ladies is probably a great thing for Nene because, you know, ladies, y'all know when we have a ladies' night, sometimes that can be just what we need right up our alley when we going through stuff, either with them darn kids or with our husband, or in this case, you know, they're battle dealing with cancer and everything, so that was good for them to get Nene out the house, too, and I thought Black sounded pretty good, I thought they sounded really, really good, but then after the performance, Cynthia, she tells them, you know, I'm thinking of having a, you know, Bailey Q, <laughs> I guess that's what she called her barbecues, so she was like, I'm going to have a Bailey Q, and she's going to be throwing that, and just like me, she Cynthia's just like me. When I have barbecues, I make it like a potluck. Like everybody bring some. Everybody bring a dish, some drinks, bring something, some meat to go on the grill, a side dish, some fruit, cheese and crackers. Just bring something instead of just bringing your face and your three, four, five, eleven kids and your uh boyfriends and girlfriends that don't nobody know because you always bring in a different one to the barbecue. <laughs> And people be like, hey, what's her name? Calling them the wrong names and stuff. Oh, oh that ain't Tammy. Oh, my bad, my bad. That's in. <laughs> but y'all know what I'm talking about. But then Candy had me cracking up uh, when Ronnie had walked up to the table. And I guess they had recently done, you know, the escape tour. And Candy was uh, performing, of course, with Escape. And BBD was one of the groups that, you know, opened up for Escape. And he was up there, you know, trying to critique them and telling them, you know, they sounded incredible. They got his um, and placement. When he said placement, Candy was like, what What placement? What you mean? He's like, well, you know, y'all have a long history. Of <laughs> I guess Candy got offended. She was like, placement? How the heck he going to try to tell me or critique me when, um, uh, excuse me, but didn't y'all open up for us? <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, you did. And even all the other ladies, you know, was in the green screen, the green room, like uh, Cynthia and Nene and all them, like, who is he to try to critique her on their show? And I have never seen Escape perform live. But every time I see them perform, no matter what set they're on, whether it's rehearsal on the Housewives show or watching them on TV, at an event or an award show, they always sound absolutely amazing every time. Like, they ain't skipped a darn beat since back in the day. So, yeah, I'm <laughs> he should have just gave them their credit. You know, gave, they give them credit when credit is due. Told them y'all sounded fabulous and move it on. But anywho, still love you, Ronnie. <laughs> but what do y'all think about this? Um, Candy has a lot of opinions from the beginning that we only own episode three, but from the beginning of the season, she has had a lot to say about Portia's boyfriend. What do y'all think about all her, all her, um, opinions and thoughts of Portia's boyfriend, Dennis? Um, uh, again, she brings it up and this time is to her friend, Carmen. Um, she was like, yeah, you know, we went to Miami, you know, to go support Nene and everything. And Portia was down there discussing her boyfriend and Candy basically was like, I didn't want to hear it. You know, I was like, you know, well, I can't do Candy's face, but she'd be like, you know, I, <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing about that man. But then she claims she doesn't know him personally, but she knows people who have dated him. And she keeps making it sound like he's either out there like that or just maybe no good for Portia. So what do y'all think about that? Um, it seems like everybody she talks to, she has to say something about Portia's boyfriend. And then when Candy's other friend showed up, her name is Jamie. And like three years ago, her and Portia actually got in a fight and Portia actually beat her down to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Portia can fight. <laughs> she can kick and she can fight. I know y'all remember that one scene when she was kicked. Oh, Lord. Anywho. Anywho. Or was that Cynthia? <laughs> I think that was Cynthia. But, anyway, these women can fight. But, um, that, that was about three years ago. But, anyway, she walks in and she meets with uh, Candy and Carmen. And Candy starts telling her about Portia's new men. So, evidently allegedly this is what's being said by candy 
that um Candy and the friends, by the way. But evidently, um Dennis is Dennis's ex is Jamie's friend. And her friend was dating Dennis when Dennis started dating Portia. And Candy was like, well, hold up. That ain't all he was dating because he was dating several people when he was with Jamie. So we might as well throw Portia into the pot too. <laughs> I don't know how many people he was dating all together. This is just, you know, what they were saying on the show. And then um, she also said... Jamie also said when her friend found out about Portia, she literally broke down from heartbreak. She was like, she was crying and everything. But, you know, I don't know how I feel either if my man left me for somebody that looked like Portia. <laughs> not saying that girl probably was not as cute as Portia or anything like that. But, you know, I mean, but I mean, the way she was making it seem like for real on a serious tip. For real, it just seemed like she was probably, you know, in love with her man and probably really wanted to be with him and he left her for Portia. Uh, allegedly. <laughs> now, I don't know this man, but it does seem like him and Portia are very, very happy. Um, but they still just throwing all this shade around and then they said Dennis got uh, Portia's name tatted up on him. And Jamie was like, well, sh that ain't nothing new. Every woman he get with, he put their name on him. Like, So I just assume that he got tattoos of all these different women names all over his body, all over his man parts. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know this man. But they just keep throwing all this shade at Portia's boyfriend. And again, it seemed like they are genuinely happy. You know, on the show, this is only season um, this is only episode three, but that's just, you know, what I see. Um, and then they were also insinuating that he was a liar. Um, he's a con. Like when they were saying, uh, don't believe him if he ever tells you that he's cooking you dinner or preparing food for you. Because what he actually does is has another woman go out and buy all the stuff and cook it. I'm like, come on now. Y'all cannot be serious. Y'all cannot be serious. He says he's going to cook dinner for his woman and then has another one of his women actually cook. I don't know. I don't know. I think they dragging it out. <laughs> I, I cannot believe that. I'm, I'm not going to believe that one. But anywho, we shall see. But then in the other scene, when Portia was with her mom and hanging out with her assistant, Dominic, you know, her mom was like, Portia, I love her mom. I love her mom. And she looks just like her. But she was like, um, looks like you gaining a little weight, child. You know, they all kind of, you gaining a little weight, child. Portia was like, well, you know, it's just a little, you know, love, weight, just, to, you know, because everybody always say people, when they get into relationships, they gain weight. <laughs> they, I don't know <laughs> if it's true for men and women, but people do say that when you get in a relationship and you're all in love and all that, you just gain weight. So I don't know. But anywho, I don't know. I was wondering at that time, like, I wonder if Portia was pregnant at that time. Or if she knew she was pregnant at that time because she did have like a little pouch, you know, with that little dress on. You did see her little pouch or her love weight, as she want to call it. But anywho, um, I thought she still was cute. Portia's so cute. She's a pretty woman. But um, her mom was just like so over the moon, like ecstatic, like overjoyed, like... She is so happy, so happy that Portia, you know, her precious Portia is in love with a man and that that man is actually in love with her precious Portia. She was up there crying and hugging her and I'm like, dang, I mean, I ain't never seen nobody so happy that their daughter is in a relationship and keep in mind, they only recently met at that time, like a few months ago. <laughs> so anywho, I don't know, but I was like, wow, this is a bit too much. I don't know what to believe. I'm like, okay, is this man a man whore or is he not a man whore? I, I don't know. But either way, Portia sure seems to, see, you know, she sure seems to love him or be in love with him. Or I don't know. Again, they look happy to me. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode. That was season 11, episode three um, of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, and the title of the episode was called A New Edition. So y'all let me know what y'all thought about that episode. 
Put it down in the chat. Put it in the comments. And even after the video is over, y'all know that I will be able to get notifications of your comments. And I can hit you back anytime, um, you know, in the comment section. And don't forget, you guys, make sure you like the video on your way in. Make sure you also share the video on your social media platforms. And also subscribe if you are not already a subscriber. Please and thank you very, very kindly. <laughs> and also, don't forget, in the chat section, is the first link that I posted is the link to our Facebook group. Click that um, link, and it takes you right to our Tanya's Primetime TV Facebook group. Click request to join, and I will add you to the group. Now, the second link, again, is my uh, custom cake decorating page. If you want to follow me over there or, you know, show me some support, just go over there, like my page, and you can scroll through and look at, you know, a lot of pictures of my cake art. And, um, again, please like the video, like, share, subscribe. Thank you very kindly. I hope you all enjoyed this review. And in the meantime and in between, Time Prime Time Squad, as usual, uh, stay safe. Be blessed. And I'm out.